Let me know when we're good to go. You can start, Frank. Okay, just want to welcome everyone to the um, January 23rd meeting of the Situa Conservation Commission. Um, this meeting is being held remotely as an alternative means of public access pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, temporarily amending certain provisions of the open meeting. You are hereby advised that this meeting and all communications during this meeting be, may be recorded by the Town of Situate in accordance with the open meeting law. This the Town of Situate, Mass, has a commitment to diversity, equality, equity, and inclusion. The Situa Conservation Commission is committed to providing an environment of respect during the meetings. We ask that all members to interact in a polite and manner, even when there is disagreement. We value the participation of our community and want all participants, including marginalized and minoritized communities, to feel welcome and respected. We ask the committee members and all who participate to commit to these standards and support and respect our community. So do we have any additions or changes to the meeting this evening? I know we have some continuances, right? Yeah, yeah. we have an additional, First, two yeah. additional continuances. So we're gonna be continuing McDonald Terrace um, to uh, the 15th, right? Yeah. And Manchester, the 15th. Manchester to the 15th. Edward Foster to the 15th. Edward Foster to the, do I even see it? Yeah, it's the next one, 181. Okay. And then fourth cliff to two six. Okay. And then also 160 CJC Highway is going to continue to February 6 as well. Oh boy. Okay. All right. Um so can I make a motion that we continue those five S? Do we have to do them? Do we should we do or? them individually? Let's do them as we get to them. All right, well, actually, go ahead, Penny. All right. I make a motion that we continue. Well, I can do the first three together. Yeah. 33 New Driftway, 30 Manchester, and 181 Edward Foster are all being continued to February 15th. So well, just... well, wait a minute. Have you opened the agenda and called roll call yet? No, we never no. call roll call. I just I, I should have asked if this I asked if there were any additions or omissions to the agenda. Right. And then we're we just set up the, the yeah, yeah, so we're getting a little ahead of ourselves, but okay. So, so I make a motion we accept the agenda as written. Um I just at the end, if we have a couple minutes, I'm just gonna update you on where we are with a couple of things. Okay. Okay. So I make a motion we accept the agenda as written and Frank wants to do a little bit of updating yeah. on, on trails and open space kind of things. Okay, on trails and open space kind of things. Can I get a second? I'll second. Second. Oh, second from Brendan. Um, all of, and we said Richard's out ready. Yes, and we don't know where Doug is. All right, so a motion from Penny. A and second. Andy's out too. Second from Brendan. Jen. Yep. And Frank. Yes. Okay. okay. So now I will make a motion that we continue. 33 New Driftway, 30 Manchester, and 181 Edward Foster to February 15th. All three. Okay. That's a motion from Penny. Do I have a second? Second from Jen. <laughs> All in favor, Brendan? Yes. And Frank, yes, this goes pretty quick with us, only four of us here. Yeah. Okay. okay. And the next one, I make a motion. We continue Central Ave, Northern Hammer Rock, Fourth Cliff to February 6th. Okay. Do I have a second? Second from Jen. All in favor, Brendan? Yes. And Frank, yes. Okay. okay. Now we can dive in. So we have. Uh, 
Somebody from on the um, seawall. seawall reconstruction? Yes, so this is a project that has been continued for quite a t some time. It's Jeremy Packard is um, I'm here. for both. Okay, great. Um, yeah, Jeremy, it's been a while. I want to just bring us up a little bit on where you're at. Yeah, definitely. Um, it has been a little while. So since we last spoke, we um, filed a, a an ENF um, with MEPA and went through that process with the uh, joint agency review, um, received comments from uh, CZM, DMF, um, <clears throat> DEP, um, which were all compiled into uh, the MEPA certificate, which was issued uh, at the end of November, 2022. Um, so there were some minor changes made to the plan based off of the MEPA review, based on the MEPA review or the, the joint agency review through the MEPA ENF. Um, yeah, let me see if I can, oh, you have the screen. So I don't I don't share, right? You guys share and I just talk through it. That's what it, right. Yes. Okay, sure, okay. Um, so if we go to page, I just wanna talk about the changes we made. Um, originally we had, uh, if you go to page SO7, please. Yeah, that'll work. Um, so the offset of the revetment um, from the face of the seawall. Originally, I had had, because this, this whole stretch is a 1,400 linear foot stretch of seawall um, from Kenneth Road uh, to Situate Avenue alongside Oceanside Drive and Turner Road. Um, so originally, there there are various record plans that that authorize um, the the revetment structure in front of the uh, in front of the existing seawall, and those record plans showed offsets anywhere from um, eighteen feet all the way up to I believe forty feet uh, as far as the existing footprint. Um, so originally, the proposed um, the plans that I had proposed had a weighted average. I did a weighted average of the length over the authorized offset footprint for the revetment. And I came up with um, an offset of uh, a little over 29 feet. So I rounded it up and called it 30 feet. And I had a 30 foot revetment proposed uh, for the entire length of the structure. Um, so in uh, coordination with MEPA and CZM, um, they, uh, they requested that I reduce that revetment footprint to stay within um, uh, the smallest offset authorized limits um, that were shown on the record plans, which is 18 feet. Um, so you can see here, we now have an 18 foot offset from the front of the wall to the uh, the seaward edge of the toe stone um, shown for the structure. And in order to to, um, to do that and still provide uh, sufficient protection for the toe or the foundation of the structure, we, um, we reduced the top elevation from, I think we had it at 11 before. So from 11 feet down to uh, eight and a half foot, uh, 8.5 feet NABD. Uh, so you'll see the top of that revetment structure has been uh, lowered to 8.5, and now we have an 18-foot offset. So that 18-foot offset is, is consistent throughout the entirety of the project, um, and the revetment stops at um, the the property at the um, the public act the beach access point on the southern limit of the project, um, just before Situate Avenue, uh, and that's and that's because the last 50 feet of the structure uh, did not have uh, revetment shown in the uh, record blends and um and there's actually like a sandy beach in that area anyway and so uh understandably you don't want to starve the um starve the the, the system of the sand um by putting the uh, solid st solid structure so we removed the structure from just that short stretch um so that was really the the most the the most significant change i'd say um uh, since you guys have seen the plans um, the other one was that we removed, if you recall, we used to have a splash pad. We were proposing like a, a concrete mattress that was going to be installed about a foot below grade um, and replaced over with sand. We had some eye bolts uh, that were installed into the back of the seawall. We were going to attach the concrete mattress, mattress to the back of the seawall um, and, and just kind of place sand our, uh, over the top of it. Uh, knowing that we would, it, it was basically going to act as a splash pad and would only be exposed um, during uh, significant storm events. We had we had overtopping and we had some erosion of that sand. Um, uh, during the CZM and, and, and MEPA review, it was pointed out that most of the project area really drains towards the road anyway, towards the wetland in the back. Um, and, and they just 
felt that the the the, the splash pad was was unnecessary and and really was just going to cause um, uh, uh, maintenance concerns down the line. And so but we just decided to uh, the whole thing out completely. So no splash pad had proposed, um, and uh, it, it, you know it just allows the the storm water to infiltrate where it, uh, where it does right behind the wall, and we have kind of the front strain. Um, uh, Strain atrium grate system uh, that drains through the wall for any kind of um, you know any overwash that's trapped there and uh, will infiltrate and, and drain through those grain um, through, through those grates. Um, so those are really the the two major changes that allowed us to get the, uh, the certificate from MEPA. Um, and I guess one of the one of the points that I wanted to discuss with the commission today was in that MEPA certificate, they CCM has requested um, that the town. Um, commit to a, 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 a nourishment program um, for the project area. And um, essentially they're looking for a, a beach a, a beach level monitoring um, program to be implemented where the town would survey um, the elevations of the existing beach in front of the wall um, uh, probably twice a year, like spring and fall. Um, and then they were looking for a, a defined um, elevation trigger that would trigger nourishment uh, for the town to go out and basically place, place sand in front of the wall. Um, we have some concerns with, with committing to that. Um, uh, number one being that, you know, nourishment projects are expensive and, and the town um, can't always come up with a funding to perform that work, to perform the placement of that, um, of that sand. Um, there are obviously additional uh, consulting and, and permit requirements that would be necessary to place that on a regular basis. Um, and it's a high energy environment, as you guys know, on Oceanside. And there's, there's concern that even if they were to, to commit to a nourishment um, program, that the sand wouldn't last out in front anyway. And so it would really just be, um, you know, expending town funds. Uh, with no real real payback or benefit um, to the town or the, or the, or the protection of the structure. Um, so the, the requirement for that, that nourishment trigger is included in the um, in the certificate. And I spoke with I spoke with MEPA about it and um, the, the the direction was to continue on the permitting um, both through the cons conservation. We are also waiting waiting for our water quality certificate from Mass DEP. Um, and I have, um, I have received concurrence from the Army Corps that this project is self-verification eligible as proposed, so we'll be self-verifying with Army Corps. Um, so really, it's just a matter of, as far as that, that requirement goes, um, a matter of seeing what the conservation and uh, DEP thinks of it and, um, you know, if we may, might be able to avoid that on this project. So is being able to afford it is, is that something that they would that would give you a buy i mean they wouldn't be saying to you you have to do nourishment regardless or, i don't i'm not sure well it 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 adds into discussion i mean it it is a um, a municipality you know and they they it, it's public funds um that would be required to to perform the work and um so it, it certainly adds into the discuss in, into the discussion of it um and we thought that that um the commission being local and familiar with this area would would recognize um you know some i don't want to call it the futility of nourishment on the oceanside drive but, but it's um it's just not an area that would be conducive to um to the placement of sand with any expectation of uh longevity right um yeah so th those were those were the two changes um that really the um that's the summary of of what has happened since um since the last time the project was presented um beyond that it's it's just as proposed before it's in and as you guys have seen built out there uh, in previous years um you know for, it's uh, 1,400 linear feet is what we're going for um, for approval for now. Uh, there is funding in place for, we think, five or 600 feet right now. 
and we're looking to get that up to bid um, <clears throat> very shortly after uh, actually um, right when the 401 water quality cert comes in we'd like to get that probably up to bid in the next couple of weeks um, and so we so at least part of this of, of this project we do anticipate will go to construction this year um, and then we are submitting grant applications for the remaining length uh, which is currently unfunded and do expect to be um, successful in securing um, grant funding for those sections as well. Um, so bless you. Um, so with these approvals, we, we do expect there to be uh, some significant construction going on out there um, over the next couple of years. Um, yeah, and, then, and that's really all I've got as far as new information and um, you know information that was uh, presented previously. Amy, do you want to start? Sure. Um, thanks, Jeremy, for bringing us up to date on where the project stands. Um, and you guys were provided with the ENF certificate. Um, I think maybe even Jen emailed, emailed it out to you even today. Um, so you have, have all the comments that the different agencies made. Um, it's pretty clear what the, the assessment was. I mean, and so um, I think that this is a project that we can probably close tonight and one that you can condition. Um, as far as comments with respect to uh, what points are made in the ENF, and their certificate um, for special conditions, um, ones that I would want to see put in would be, which I guess are that are already addressed in the plan set, but so they remove the concrete mattress and, and is it on the plan set, does it already specify that decks and patios that are behind the seawall that are taken up that are not replaced? Is that, is that already part of that plan set, Jeremy? That, that's in the construction notes, and that's also in the spec package that goes out to contractors as well. Okay, yeah. So I, I think we should probably weave that into the orders as well, just so it's clear um, for residents that that's the expectation. Um, it there there will would also be a condition about other permits that are required before work can be started, which that's just a standard condition, the four hundred one and the other, um, any other remaining outstanding, I guess, higher level permits that need to be um, achieved before you can start. And then with respect to the monitoring, I think that there should definitely be, um, uh, you know, I, I, and I guess you're not saying that you're, that the town, I talked to Sean about this um, too. I, I don't think that there's a concern about monitoring the elevation of the beach. I mean, especially like, you know, spring, early fall, or after major storm events, it's reasonable that the town would go and be taking a look at these areas anyways to look at the, um, you know, the the condition of the wall and to see if the, you know, that there's been any impact to the condition of the wall, see what the elevation the, of the beach The beach was. elevation specifically, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, with, so I think that, you know, some kind of a um, baseline elevations and then mon keeping an eye on the monitoring and, and see if, there's a dramatic decrease and um, maybe trying to establish whether um, there's a point in which some material would be uh, needed to be added would be something that would be, I think, more of a good faith effort on part of the town is more of a maintenance requirement. So I think that kind of like flipping it around, it's not like a bad thing to add a condition about nourishing, but more that if conservation could weave the condition in to allow the town to add compatible material as necessary to maintain the wall um, without, you know, further permitting um, as, you know, as needed. Um, maybe it would be a condition in perpetuity, so further orders wouldn't be required um, rather than being onerous to the town. Um, you know, the wording could be maybe loosely worded in like, you could put something like as funding allowed or, you know, offset, you know, 
town good faith effort, that type of thing. We come up with loose, loose language, which wouldn't necessarily obligate the town, but would allow them to do it um, when needed. Follow? Absolutely, yeah. I think um, that's something we would, we would definitely be amenable to. Okay. That's Anything what I else? Meant. No, those were my primary comments. Okay. Um, Penny? Yeah, I have two questions, okay? My first question is, Amy, did I understand you right that the residents along there have to take their decks down for this to be instructed and won't be allowed to put decks back up? No, the um, the, the contractor will remove decks as necessary to construct the wall um, yeah. as we have on previous projects and they will, they replace in kind. Um, oh, all right. As they, just... as they restore. Okay. No, I mean, nothing, 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 uh, no structures are allowed to be reattached to the wall itself. Um, yes, but no, they shouldn't be. Are replaced on piling to whatever it is. Oh, okay. Okay. That's good. And my other question is yeah, I just, um, I think it's going to be very difficult for the town to nourish because I know how much it costs. It, it's outrageous what it costs. And, um, that happens to be an area that, you know, one year you have sand there, the next year it's all cobble. So that that would be, be a concern. But if Amy could put it, if funds are available or something loose like that, because um, I just think it's going to be a really hard thing to do, to promise to do, you know, to nourish there. But other than yeah, that... Our thoughts too. Yeah, I'm yeah. all set. I'm ready to go with it. But on the other hand, if if an area becomes compromised, I think that language would allow the town to go in there and fix it too. So yeah. It, well, I just you know, sand just washes away. But anyways, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Jen. Uh, yeah, I think I'm. I think I'm good. I'm, I'm glad to hear about the splash pad as well. So I'm good. Hey, Brendan. Yeah, I, I'm good as well. I have nothing additional. Do we have anybody in the audience on this one? Yay! Seeing nobody. Oh. Um, okay, so there's no splash pad on the inside. That the concrete on the outside, um, that's something that goes below the um, the fortification you put at the base of the wall. Is that right? Um, there's there's no concrete oh, besides the, it's a filter fabric with stone. I'm sorry, yes, that's right, right, crushed stone. Yep. Okay. Um, And the detail on the double wall, wh where does that take place? Those are um, at the Walkways. the public access points. Got it. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's just the way that the sections cut. Like when you're when you're right in the middle of that, that of that access way, you've got walls on both sides. Right. Um. Looks good. So on the on the inside of the wall. Termi, is there going to be any sort of um, fortification or anything to keep as that water goes over to keep that from eroding, or are you just going to backfill it with with whatever materials there? We're just going to backfill it with what's there, um, and you know, it, it, existing conditions. You really just got it's all sand right now, and I know homeowners along that stretch are are pretty used to. Um, kind of doing their own regrading and stuff after storms. Um, and we, we've tried different splash pad um, configurations on, on other stretches. And um, 
I haven't had a lot of success. You know, if you use too small of stones, you end up with, with those small stones all over people's yards. If you use too big of stones, they tend to um, act similar to the revetment in the front and they just scour around it, right? And people have to place the sand right back on top of them anyway. Um, and that's why we were, we were going for kind of that concrete mattress approach um, to see if we could leave some sacrificial sand on top and allow that mattress to take the brunt of it after that initial um, sacrificial layer had been washed away. Mm -hmm. um, that idea wasn't too well received. And, um, and so we came back to this where basically it's going to be <clears throat> just sand, just backfilled as, as you see today. Um, and we do have the addition of the kind of French drain system there. Um, that allows some of that storm water to escape. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it will not be too much different than what you see today. Okay. And I'm sorry, the, does the town have any funding for this yet or have they have? Yeah, um, yeah, we, we've received, uh, we've received um, I forget the exact dollar amount, but we think we can uh, fund five to 600 feet um right now so we're looking to put that out to bid in the next couple of weeks um and then we are going for funding for two additional sections um that that applications do i believe in a month about a month from now so the um, section so would you start at 22 oceanside and work your way south yes yeah we're going to start at the north and work south yeah okay um I think that's it from the this profile mat is going to mesh to whatever you already have built so far. On the north side, it matches on the yeah, the southern side over, over the entire 1400 linear feet. It raises the existing wall um, anywhere from like a foot and a half to three feet in some locations. Um, but it will match the top elevation that we have um, uh, of the walls we've already reconstructed. And we'll just continue that elevation all the way down. Got it. Okay. All right. I think that's it for me. Okay, then I'll. Right. You want a motion, Frank? I think I take a motion to close. I make a motion to close. Has Penny? Do I have a second? <laughs> second uh, from Jen. Brendan and I are making eyes at each other. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody. <laughs> Brendan's being so courteous. I um, know. All in favor? Uh, uh, aye. Uh, Brendan. <laughs> Yes. And Frank, yes. We don't we still don't have Doug, right? No, I don't know what happened to him. Okay. I text right. him, but we'll find him. Yeah. All right. Let's see. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jeremy. Um, Next one is 25 Julian, and we have Dana Altabello. Yes. Uh, hey, good evening. Good evening. Um, should I hold off, or you want me to just no. start right in? Go ahead. Okay. Good evening. Um, again, my name is Dana Altabello with Merrill Engineers in Lance Bears. I am here with uh, Monica, Mc uh, Monica McKenzie and uh, Dan Quayle, the, the architect for the project. We're representing uh, Bob Wolf, who's the owner. Uh, this project is located at number 25 Julian Street, which is on the northerly side of the road at the intersection of Ocean Drive. Um, it also abuts uh, Hummer Rock Beach directly to the northeast or rear of the property. Um, this portion of um, Hummer Rock is com completely barrier beach and coastal dune. The property itself sits on approximately 5,670 square feet of land and there is a large portion, as you can see, uh, located within 100 feet to the existing uh, coastal dune to the northeast of the property. The, the limit of the 100 foot buffer is shown in green. Uh, currently, there's a single family dwelling on the property with um, existing at grade um, wooden decks around the, the structure itself. Um, but there is some um, remnants of old driveways along the northerly property line, uh, which are kind of hatched now. And there's an existing septic system below the, the driveway um, in front of the, the existing structure. Um, since the last meeting, uh, the plans have been revised to address comments received from the commission as well as from CZM, uh, from specifically uh, 
Rebecca Haney of, of CZM, which include the following. Uh, the applicant is proposing to pull the structure um, forward towards um, the 50 foot wide way in front of the, the property. Uh, this will pull the house and the structure and the alteration away from the, the edge of the, the, coastal beach, the coastal beach a little bit further than it currently is. Um, so this, along with the removal of the existing at grade deck, which is currently on top of the dune, uh, will pull the, the structure approximately 11 feet uh, further from the, the coastal beach. So currently the deck itself is 28.7 feet from the um, edge of coastal beach and the new proposed deck uh, will be about 39.9 feet away from the edge of coastal beach. Um, the existing undersized uh, septic tank, which is currently below the existing um, house, will be removed and replaced with a Title V compliant 1500 gallon uh, septic tank, which will also be set below the house. Um, this will be set in compliance um, with uh, the requirements of, of Title V, which require that um, septic tanks in a velocity zone be set above the, the um, velocity zone elevation. Uh, in this case, the it's a BE elevation 17, and the, the bottom of the tank has been set at um, elevation 18.3. So it gives us a little over a foot buffer with that. Um, and updated plans have been submitted to the, the Board of Health for their review and a, approval. Um, originally on the proposed plans with the first submittal, there was a proposed wall on the northerly side of the house. Um, that will be that has been re removed from these um, revised plans, as well as the existing retaining wall that's also in that area that will also be removed from the site. Um, we have added a, a table over to the right side of the plan that just kind of details the existing and proposed um, impacts on the, the coastal dune and, and barrier beach. As I mentioned earlier, the proposed um, construction will be set back further from the edge of uh, coastal beach, approximately 11.2 feet further than what's out there currently. And we've also looked at the, the total footprint of coverage over the dune, and that will be reduced approximately 153 square feet over what's out there currently, as far as the existing house and decks and uh, concrete driveway, et cetera. Uh, so the, the concrete driveway, as you can see on the, the bottom left side of the property will be removed. We'll get rid of all the impervious driveway area. Um, and the as I mentioned, the house and the, the decks will be pulled away from the the coastal beach and will reduce the overall um, coverage on the, the dune barrier beach environment. Um, we all, as I mentioned, <clears throat> excuse me earlier, we'll, we will be removing approximately 254 square feet of um, existing at grade um, decks that's, that are out there that are just kind of basically sitting on the, the dune itself. All, all proposed decks and the structure itself will be raised up well above the, the existing uh, dune that's currently out there on uh, some wooden pilings. Um, and lastly, we have um, submitted a timber and pile, a timber pile and beam plan, which is prepared by BMC. Uh, this shows the, the structural plans as was uh, previously requested by the, the commission. Um, so I guess just in, in summary, the, the proposed projects will provide substantial improvements over the existing conditions on site, including the uh, installation of a new Title V compliant septic tank, um, a reduction in the overall footprint over the dune, uh, increased distance from the coastal dune, uh, the edge of coastal beach to the, the proposed structure, and the removal of all at grade structures and forward foundations from the, the site itself within the, the dune and, and barrier beach environment. Um, we'll also, as I mentioned, be removing approximately 200 square feet of uh, impervious uh, big conch driveway up in that front left or uh, northeasterly portion of the site itself. I think that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay, thank you. Sure. Um, Amy, do you want to start? Okay. Um, a lot on this plan. Yeah, there is. A lot. Of lines. A lot. Um, well, thanks, Dana. Um, I mean, it, it it's it, it's definitely a revision that's, I guess, going in the right direction. Um, although I still would not say that we're at the point where this entire project is something that I would consider is approvable under the Wetlands Protection Act. 
as it stands right now. Um, just there's, you can see um, from, from the plan, although on at this scale, it's hard to see. I mean, at least at the screen that I'm looking at, um, unless you were to zoom in, you you know, you have to really zoom in because there's a lot of detail on the plan. Um, but there is, um, you know, this is now that the Conservation Commission has been out to the site and we are familiar with the site, we know that this is a really healthy, nice, vegetated frontal primary frontal dune that provides a lot of um, protection for this property and surrounding properties. So it provides a lot of storm damage protection and flood control. And, and it's just really, you know, does provide some good protection from the big storms. And if you were to work in the dune, when you start, you know, drive any piles or do any work into that vegetated dune, you're going to destabilize it. And so it's, it's not going to function the way it is right now. So that's why that the Wetland Protection Act has that standard for no, no um, disturbance of that that dune. So, so there's. Well, I appreciate that the house is like the footprint is staying in the existing footprint. I think it's the the lateral expansion of the deck um, in the front and on the side that's probably those piles. That would be the the portion of the project that would need to be reined in. Um, and furthermore, the the act doesn't allow for mitigation to overcome the um, you know disturbance in the in the dune. But and I I think that the um, removal of the wall is a good thing, and also the tank, the new upgraded septic tank, is a is a good thing. Um, and you know, other improvements are also clear too. So it's it's not completely a downer news, but um, I don't think as as it stands that it's great. So, sorry. Wanna, do you wanna um, respond to that before we move to another member? Uh, sure, I, um, yeah, I, I understand what, what Amy's saying. Um, you know, we did try to balance pulling it, you know, the, the existing deck out of the existing dune, um, which we've done. Obviously, the dunes is, for the most part, the project is within the existing footprint. Um, you know, the, the decks on the side are kind of currently there. They're, there's piles. They're basically at grade. They're laying on the dune. Um, so now we're, we'll be putting in new piles, but it's also going to be elevated above the dune to allow the dune to function. And the littoral uh, drift will, will be able to happen again, as, as opposed to now it's just sitting there. It's, it's not allowing any uh, very, you know, very little sand to move about below the the, the decks in that area. Um, to the rear of the property, again, we would, it's almost like a, a swapping of area. Um, you know, it's going, currently it's pushing further into the dune. Uh, we're pulling that away from the beach and bringing it back um, into the, you know, the kind of a, a footprint that's consistent with the house as opposed to pushing this one long um, deck area out into the, over the, the top of the dune. So then the dune itself will have a, a larger area that's that's contiguous where it'll be stabilized and um, you know vegetated to hold you know act as a dune as opposed to now it's got the the deck kind of pushing in there and breaking it up a little bit more so it keeps it more together and wrapping around the, the property on that that side as well. Okay. Um. We don't have Richard on here tonight. Um, who wants to? Who who went out to this site? I'm trying to remember. Penny, do you want to start? Andy was there. Penny was there. Rich was there. Yeah. Okay. Penny, why don't you go ahead? Well, I'm. There's so many lines. I'm having trouble. How? What's the width of that deck? Uh, 34 feet. No, no, the width, the length. Uh, 12. <clears throat> if, if, no, I guess it's the depth or 12 yeah, feet. Yeah, the depth. Okay, yeah. Um, 12 feet deep and 34 feet wide. 12 feet deep. Oh, I see it now. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, and that 
section, the pose, you're going to take that um, little Ewing stand or whatever it was out there. You're going to take that off the thing that j jutted out. That's correct. That small section. Oh, I don't know what to say. It, it's um, mm. I understand what Amy's saying. You drive new pilings, you're gonna, but you, um, I don't know, Frank. I'm. Um, it, it's such a tough site. It's so tight out there. There's basically no room to move. You know it. Um. Well, that was helpful. Yeah, very helpful. I know. I I just um. Well, why don't we move on a little bit? You can. Yeah, go go ahead. It's all right, um, Jen. I uh, yeah, I think I understand Penny's struggle because it's a uh, if the standard is you know no adverse uh, impact, it's hard to find a solution uh, based on the plan we're seeing. Um, so it's hard to provide constructive comment in that way. I mean, I I love the attempt, the uh, proposed removals of the concrete driveway and that um, viewing platform. It's uh, unfortunate and fortunate that that dune is probably the healthiest <laughs> I've ever seen. Um, it, it is. It's like it's. Uh, wonderfully abnormal um but unfortunately a burden uh for this particular project okay. so i i don't have anything uh better than penny to contribute right. could i just um, ask a question frank sure um is this a two-story house the new one uh yes it is well I'm just wondering, I'm sit, sitting here wondering, what about doing a deck just from the second story and can't leave it off the house where you wouldn't even go into the dune? Could that be an option for them? Um, it's certainly something we could um, entertain. I was trying to find the, I think we had submitted the architectural um, section the last time, but previously. And I'm just trying to, I understand they do want a deck and I can, I would too, but I'm trying <laughs> with that doom, we really don't want it touched or disturbed that maybe you could topsy-turvy the house and put the bedrooms downstairs and the living quarters upstairs you know the living room and kitchen i've seen that done and then can't can't leave a deck up there that would be lovely you'd really have have a view from the second sure. just a thought yeah you know i think the if we look at the the pilings um obviously there's there's impacts out there from the existing structure and pilings from the deck um right you know when the when they're driving the piles it will It'd be kind of temporary impacts um yeah. but again that if it's done carefully at you know at the right time of the year um we should be able to minimize any impacts that are long term obviously it's going to be a major it's going to be a, a, a major um improvement over what's out there now where everything's so close to the ground you know yeah, getting the no getting the decks and everything although it's you know like you said it is a temporary short-term impact it is Going to get that deck well off the the dune, and ultimately in the long the long run, it's going to be a an improvement yeah. to that that dune's health, and you know making sure that it's there to you know uh, protect this area of the beach. So it's uh, although it is the, the the impacts you're talking about, it's going to be a long term you know benefit for that that dune area. Okay, thank you. Sure. Um, Brendan. Yeah. So. Yeah, same issue, I guess, with the decks. And it looks like three of these piles are going into that dune where there are, was none. No issue. Uh, also, did I hear retaining walls being removed? Uh, that's correct. We, originally, there was a retaining wall proposed on the north 
the northerly side, just to, right, right yeah. now there's a, a foundation wall holding back the, the dune between the neighbor. Um, so we were trying to hold it back with a, a similar wall just so it, it didn't impact the dune, but I think we can grade it down, you know, and it'll just kind of do its thing over time. So that, that wall has been removed from the original proposal as well as an existing wall that currently connects to the front of the garage. Yeah. But all right, but the wall along the is going to there's one that's going to stay, right? That's correct on the right hand side as you pull in. Okay. So yeah, that, that that's a difficult deck issue you got there though. That's, yeah, that's all I've got. Yeah, the idea was just to raise it up and you know let the the dunes function with the 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 sand moving on its own, where it's currently not able to do that really with those decks out there. No. Well, think of this a little bit like the guy with the pool. Uh -huh. Like we have that the same kind of standing with the Wetlands Protection Act with the, these type of standards, you know? So it's the coastal dune standard where it's no adverse impact onto this dune. And, and so it's, I think they just need to rein it, the project in so that it doesn't impact the, you know, it doesn't go out onto that primary doom. So if they can pull it back into that existing footprint, that would be great. If they could keep it all into that existing footprint that they already have, that would be an approvable project easily. So I think that that's pretty workable, you know. Um. Okay, I, I didn't, do we have anybody in the audience for this one? Uh, Mona, Monica McKenzie's- This is the architect, so okay. hold on. Unmute, hi. Good evening. Hi, I'm not the architect, I'm the builder. Okay, just, you wanna give me your name and address, please? My name is Monica McKenzie. I live at 5 Alden Road in Hingham, Mass. 243. Okay. Thank and you. the architect is also on this, if we could unmute him so that he could make comment. So um, my issue is that um, the deck that's sticking out over the um, existing dune, the dune is like right underneath it. Um, when you pull back from that, the house itself is a lot lower than the dune. So the proposal was to bring the deck back from the dune and to do the other things that were proposed. Um, agree to a 1500 gallon tank when he is, um, he has a 750 gallon tank that was put in recently that was approved for him. He, he said he would do the 1500 gallon tank to comply, to try to go forward. He would remove the wall on the left. The wall on the right is um, this charming thing that's where the right of way to the beach is. So I don't think that anyone wants that removed. To pull the deck, I mean, I would, I, I'm speaking for the owner, but to pull a deck into the proposed structure is not gonna work. The structure is 600 square feet. When you walk into the house, you there is four small rooms it's a cottage the wind is whipping through this thing this thing is not um livable so his idea is to make it comply and make it to be big enough for his family and to go up um we thought by pulling it back removing the wall agreeing to the 1500 gallon septic tank that we were doing what the everybody wanted us to do to put the suggestion that we make it smaller and we pull a deck into a 600 square foot um, living space is, una it's, it's not, you know, it's not livable. It's, there's not enough square footage there. Why couldn't the deck be narrower? Well, the deck can't be on the second floor as you recommended because Massachusetts state building code is, you can only go out a third for a cantilevered anything, and you need two thirds of it inside the house. So the idea that you have this deck that's even livable, that's being supported by two thirds underneath the house, the house is too small to even support that. So that's not gonna happen. So that's fine. All right, but what about making the deck 
not as wide or the depth of it. Why can't you pull that back? Well, the deck currently, as you all were out there, it's a viewing stand. It's not even a deck. I mean, you can't put two chairs next to each other on that deck. So by pulling it back beyond where the dune is high, where the proposed deck is, if you do not like where that is, and it's 12 feet out by 34 feet long, why don't you recommend to us what you think would be acceptable rather than continuing to try to figure out what would be acceptable and then coming back to meetings. Fair enough, Amy. What would be acceptable? The, with the, the, well, the right. comments were already stated that it was, the, it was no adverse impact. So yes, but, uh, Amy, what I'm saying to you is adverse impact based on the back of the dune um, and when you Meaning were there, that no expansion outside the footprint, the existing footprint of the house. So that was that was the the message that I received from the comments. But it's just this particular dune is fragile and and needs. Um, it's pretty stable. When you go out to the beach and you turn around and you look at the house, the house to the right of it has the ex extension of the the, the dune completely across the front of that property also. Well, I think like, even if it was stable or fragile, doesn't, isn't necessarily important. It's that the dune exists and the dune can't be touched. There but can the, be no adverse effect. But the dune is, okay. Um, you know, I'm just trying to find a common ground for the owner because the, the house, the cottage is unlivable. So if he isn't able to expand it or to change it or whatever, then it's just going to be uninhabitable. Un you can't live in it. So I'm not saying let's, let's ruin the dune because of that. I'm saying, let's come to some common ground. I mean, it's very, the dune is high for the area. I mean, it's higher than the it's almost higher than the um, flood zone. I mean, after he gets this done, he could con conceivably apply for no flood insurance. It's high. Um, if we put the house higher, we have enough room in the height and move it back. I mean, whatever would work. Looking for some guidance from you guys to say that if, if what you guys are saying is you're not touching it, the house and the notice I'll deliver to the owner is You're kind of breaking up, Monica. Oh, I'm sorry. I said if the issue is that, I mean, that my understanding is that um, from the state, when they made the recommendations, it's recommendations. Um, if you guys are saying that it can only stay 600 square feet and it cannot have a deck, then I will deliver that message to the owner and he can decide what to do because it's not livable. It's not habitable. Okay. It's basically a teardown right this minute. So, so I guess, Monica, that's one point, I guess, maybe is that the message from the state, they, they weren't really necessarily recommendations so much as they were citing the Wetlands Protection Act. I understand. My husband says work for the state for a really long yeah, time. Yeah, right. So, so they were just, you know, they were giving us technical um, feedback on the project mm -hmm. pursuant to the regulations of the Wetlands Protection Act. Mm -hmm. And so she was citing the Dune standard. So mm -hmm. that's all that mm -hmm. was really. Mm -hmm. um, where did that I, input I come from? A Amy, wh who gave us that input? CZM. And, and it was, you know, pretty, it was standard stuff that we've seen before on projects like this. It was, mm -hmm. we're not picking on this particular mm -hmm. project um, mm -hmm. by, you know, it's it's just this does happen to be a special site, I would say, in that um I understand what you're particularly saying. Particularly high and, and you know, and, and and I do and I one thing is is the height of the dune. Like and I I I do appreciate your comment, Monica, on the like does the dune will it have sufficient um ability to migrate with the height of the dune and the height of the house? Mm -hmm. I mean it's it will like. 22.6, 22. I mean, it's, it is barely going to move under the house because it's so high. It's, mm 
it's a beautiful doom, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But my, my, my challenge is that I understand what you're saying. So we have a beautiful dune with a unhabitable cottage behind it and someone who's willing to do whatever it takes to make it, um, you know, a, a place for him to be. If that can't happen, then at this point with this much work going on, I just need to know that so that I can tell him because as the um, other person suggested, we can't leave her a deck off the second floor. It, it, you can't you can't do that in Massachusetts State Building Code. There's not enough room for that to happen. This is the same thing. You take a 600 square foot property and you pull a deck inside of it. What do you have? You have nothing. You you have, you don't have enough room to do anything. Okay, we got a couple. I got to see a couple other hands up here. Okay, we're just repeating ourselves. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, so um, Dana or Dana, did, did I see somebody else? Um, well, Daniel Quayle had his hand up, mm -hmm. but he doesn't anymore. So I, I'll do. He well, he does now again. So hold mm -hmm. on, I'll do. It. Thank you. Daniel, you're on. Can't hear you, Daniel. <laughs> Still not. Well, let's go to Dana for a second, see if they can figure that out. There it is. Dana, yeah. Hi, Dana. I, I apologize. I, um, I, I just wanted to cough real quick and I put it on mute and that was it. Oh. Um, so I just want, it was my understanding that the really the entire property and this, this portion of Hummer Rock is considered dune and barrier beach. Um, so that's obviously the, the more significant part of the dune itself, obviously, is the, the elevated areas to the rear. But technically, I believe the entire property is um, considered dune, you know, it's a dune barrier beach environment. Um, so we're, you know, I, I thought, you know, in, in looking at what um, Rebecca had sent from um, from CZM, you know, obviously no adverse impact. There's currently adverse impacts on site, but to me that means improvement. Um, can you eliminate the impervious surfaces? Um, make sure that the the structures are elevated, allowing the the dune to function the way it should. Um, different things like that. So that was the, the approach we tried to take here. And, you know, obviously the size of the impacts and the, the, the structure over the, the dune itself would be important. That's gonna obviously impact from a sponge perspective, you know, what can grow in that area, et cetera. So the approach we try to take, and I, I mentioned earlier, was we try to reduce the impacts of the, the structure over the dune. Um, so in that case, we were able to reduce it by 153 square feet which allows, you know, that's 150 square, 53 square feet that'll have vegetation and, and more uh, stability on the dune that, than they, they currently have now. Um, so it's just, you know, we, we took a pro, the approach of the, the project as a whole, as opposed to just that back area where it's certainly important. And that's, that's a, you know, that's a, a beautiful area. It's pretty well stabilized, but we are, you know, pulling the deck out of there. And then we kind of looked at the dune as a whole on this project and just tried to make sure that the impacts are, are reduced. Um, some benefits are provided to the dune over what's currently out there. And that, that seemed like it should meet the intent of um, the, the Wetlands um, the Protection Act out there as far as the adverse impact. Okay. Um, oh, thank you. Sure. Um, I, if, if we don't have the other participant on, I've got a few questions. Do we know if anybody else... Um, is on? No, I mean... Daniel's unmuted, but we don't hear him. So, yeah. can you hear me now? Oh yes. All right, perfect. I, I just wanted to reiterate what Dana was saying that you know, we're, we're, if you think about that protection of the existing deck and the stairs that go up to that viewing. I'm sorry, who, Mr. A, 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 I'm so, sorry, Dan, the owner or I'm no, sorry. no, Daniel Quayle, the architect for the okay. project. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to reiterate that Dana has mentioned this a couple of times, but pulling back that that existing viewing platform in, in a portion of where this new deck is, is actually over where the existing is. You know, we've got four posts that go down and support this new deck. There will be certain square footage of replication that happens. 
Um, and then again, because the, the new floor level is elevated above the, the highest part of that dune there, the dune can function and change and shift over time as it's intended to do. So, you know, we felt this was a fairly reasonable approach for posts down there and replicating what replicating the, you know, once that old viewing platform comes out with the beach grass and, and you know, beach roses, whatever the appropriate planting material is. Um, it was a, you know, fairly, I thought, modest impact, if any. Um, it, as far as the depth of the deck being 12 by 34, we go really any shorter than the 12 feet, it really doesn't make it all that usable. Um, you know, perhaps could go down to 10 feet, but again, that would have to be something we would confirm with the owner where they'd be willing to, to do that. Okay. Um, I, I apologize. I didn't get out to this site and I, I have a few questions. Um, so when I'm looking at this plan, I see a hatched line, which I'm assuming is the outline for the existing home. Is that, am I correct? Here we can unmute uh, Dana. Um, so he's shaking his head. Yeah, so, uh, that's so, correct. So the new the new house is a is a larger square. I, I see. Um, it says uh, like in the I would say the south east corner. It says uh, wood deck to be removed. So is there an existing wood deck that's on the south side of this house now that has the outside shower and and whatnot? Yes, there is. Um, so this. The existing house has a deck almost wrapping around. Okay. Um, there's, a, there's a large deck area in the front, then along the side where it gets to be, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the, the southerly side is where you, you have the equity deck. It's just kind of sitting on the dune. Yeah. And then it wraps around the back of the house and it's kind of sitting on the dune again, goes upstairs. And Daniel, um, we'll get back to you in a minute. Yeah. So there is a, a substantial deck system on, on this existing house. Okay. So and then all that deck gets removed, and in place of that is the footprint for the new home, which is basically square. Yeah, it has. Um, so we're we're outside, we're inside of the footprint a little bit on the northerly side, just to try to you know work with zoning and, and get this house compliant. Oh yeah, it. yeah, I see it now. Okay. So we're so we're losing a little bit of you know square footage there. Yep. Um, but we, our thought was to pull some of it out of the dune, and pull it back, and then you lose some of that there. And okay, so it kind of makes a, a similar area. Got it. And then, so then there's a wood deck that heads towards the ocean with a set of pole stairs and it drops down to another wood deck that must be just about a grade that extends out in that distance that you're proposing a re, um, a revegetation. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So you've already got a deck that projects out that way. You're talking about removing all that, but having a deck that extends 12 feet off the house, the full length of the house. That's correct. Okay. So the lowest structural member on this project is 22.67. So that's the that's the beam that's on top of the pile. Yes, for the house. Dan, maybe Daniel is whoever's got this one. Um, <clears throat> So then the first floor is above that. Because I'm look, I guess where my point is is I'm looking at like the highest point of the grade on this property is at 22 feet. And the lowest horizontal member is at 2267. So they're almost the same. Right. right. But the but we we there's some cross sections through that, and we actually did a 3D rendering based on Dana's um, contour plans here. I don't know if the committee has seen that or not, but it, yes, the high the high point is is about elevation 22. The the bottom of our structure is 22.67, but the grades are dropping down towards that driveway. So as, as the further you get under the deck and the in the footprint of the house itself, you know it, it's it, it gets more open or more there's more vertical separation between the the grade and the underside of the house. Um, it, it, one of the things I just wanted to mention, you know, the existing house is has a 600 square foot footprint, but it also has 640 square feet of deck. So the existing conditions right now is 1,240 square feet of house and deck. The proposed footprint on the first floor with the decks is 1,600, just under 1,600 square feet. So it's it's a it's an increase, but we we felt that the 360 square feet or so was relatively modest considering how 
small the existing house was, what the owner was trying to achieve. I, I, I get your approach. I guess what I'm trying to, and you, and you have um, an area that you're proposing to remove that's basically right on the, on the dune. And I, unfortunately, I don't have an elevate. What I'm looking at is this plan and, and, a, and a, just a, a foundation or a piling plan. Um, and just to, so we're leaving a retaining wall. You're proposing to relieve one, re, leave one retaining wall on the south side, removing the north side and removing all asphalt or, or concrete driveway and replacing that with gravel. That's right. That's right. Okay. Yep. Uh, so, so Frank, sorry to, oh, sorry, keep going. No, go ahead. Um, I don't know. It, it, there's a, again, a lot of lines on this plan. So it's hard to maybe see what the buildable envelope is for this. Um, but could you be gaining more of this living space that you're searching for if you pulled it back towards the street? Yes. Like, is that something you've explored? Um, I'm sure I can, I can certainly respond to that or Dan. Um, so, but that was, <clears throat> excuse me, that was kind of the, the basis of a lot of the, uh, this revision. We pulled the house forward as much as we could, but we didn't want to go, there's an existing septic system there. So we can only go so far. So right now we're kind of, I think we're six or eight inches beyond the existing foundation wall that was out there. So we're kind of getting into an area that we're not fully, you know, we don't want to go any further without being able to, I don't think we can go any further without being able, without being able to not impact the septic system that's out there. Aren't you so replacing trying. the septic system? We're not. The, the existing septic system is in good shape. So the, the idea was to, I think they're just replacing the, yeah, they're just replacing the tank. Right. Oh, okay. The leaching yeah, so we didn't field, want to get into that. Sorry. The leaching field is is under the driveway. Oh, right that's now. Great. So sounds like something I mean, that be maybe considered though. I mean, if it's a raised rebuild as it is, anyways, you might um, get a big house that way. Um, all right, I, I just, the elevation that you're proposing to put the house at, in, in a lot of cases, it seems like they sit way up in the air, but in this particular case, because of where it's located, it looks like right now the towards the roadside, you're going to be roughly nine feet. The first floor elevation is going to be roughly nine feet above grade. Um, it's probably going to be a bit more than that. Um, so that's the bottom of the structure. It's right. 22.6. So your, your existing grade out there is 14.5 or so, 14.6. Six, six seven, eight, eight, yeah, 10 yeah. feet maybe there. Yeah. So it's, from the front, it's getting pretty high. Yeah. But from the side, you're right, it's going to blend in a little bit better. So is it... Is it vegetated right uh, wrapping all around that ex that existing deck, the part where you're proposing? It, it, it doesn't seem like the house is really an issue from, from what I can see. I mean, you're taking the house down. You're, you're not on the footprint on the northern side, which is almost an offset for the stuff you're adding on the southern side. So the, the two areas that are in question are the squares of the deck the front deck on the left and right side of the existing deck am i right yeah yeah so, so the middle part's already covered by a deck and then the piece that extends forward onto the onto the dune now is similar in size to either the left or the right side i, I think that's fair right square footage wise maybe it's a little different shape but Yep. So it looks like what we're really talking about adding is just a small, is one small section of the of the deck over that dune. That, 
that seems to make sense. It is a if you if you swap all the the pieces out existing and proposed. I mean, that's what I'm looking at. If if you take that piece of deck that extends forward and you're removing that, and and that were allowed to be placed either to the left or the right. I'm just my guess. My at the end of the day, my question is. Is it feasible to maybe make the deck a little bit smaller one side or the other? And is that a viable swap, Amy? If we have something that's sitting on there right now that could be revegetated, it, it seems like it would be reasonable to take that square footage and let them have a deck either left or right. So maybe they wouldn't have quite a larger deck that they have facing now. My preference, I, I mean, it's all basically at that same elevation, elevation 22. You don't really want to push the house much higher. Yeah, so with, with the dune standard, Frank, it, it doesn't work the same as with like BBW or buffer. So there's mm -hmm. no mitigation allowed to replace in kind. So it doesn't work that way. Is that a, is, I mean, is that a recommendation? From no, CP? that's written into the Wetlands Protection Act that way. So it's no adverse impact period, no no mitigation allowed. So given that, it feels as though this, I know it's not Monica's preference, but like it, you guys have to probably go back to the drawing board on what well, you well, let's wanna just, do here. Well, let's just say, but let, Let's just take a look at this. I mean, it seems silly in a way. If you, if they said, well, fine, you know what, rather than have a, a deck across the front of our property, we're just going to have a deck that just sticks way out some more. So they, they're entitled to have what they had before. So now we're going to have a deck projecting further into the dune than if, if, if it got pulled back. And yeah, well, but that's okay because it's already impacted. It, it's illogical. I know. Well, talk. To, yeah, I, I mean, we're not the coastal geologists here, but I mean, it does make sense to me, actually. Um, so I guess you're right. It would just be a little bit odd. They could just have a, the deck stick out in a different fashion. Is there anybody who who the jurisdiction of the Sami goes to who? Is this DEP? So this is someone like um, Greg De Caesar or someone like yeah, that? Yeah. Yeah. Have, have you? Yeah. So up? so this would be something that 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 um, you know you guys could condition or deny or whatever, and could you know go to the state for a second opinion because these are all definitely these aren't the local regs that we're interpreting, although our local regs also have these same standards in them. So it would be both um, state act and uh, local act. So if it was appealed, it would it would go to both state and superior well, um, if it well, did before, it that way, but- Before we go to an appeal, I'd like to get an opinion. I mean, I, I, just, I just don't see that as being a logical, alternative and I, I it may be worded that way and maybe there's nothing they can do but i'd certainly like to see if that well so we've had an, a, a technical opinion from czm who yeah that's okay is I, de also works for dep um you know they're under dep but we wouldn't be able to get an opinion on this specific case from dep we could talk broadly about it yeah, I, I mean, like about the situation, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. as far as a dune and like this, this scenario, but not the case. Okay. Because otherwise, if it were to go to appeal, it, it would, you're, they're, they're just not supposed to talk specifically about that. Yeah. All right. Well, I, if, that's, I mean, if that's what you want to do, I mean, and we could continue this pending like that chat and I can report back if you'd like. I, I'd like to, before, before these folks come back with a plan that shows something that you know, if we if we say to them at this meeting, you know, it's it, that's not going to work that way. So, you know, we're going to continue, and then they're going to come back to us with a plan that the deck projects way out like that. Before they before they do that, if, if we could just get 
Right. Or, or they could consider to, to bring it back, like Jen suggested, back towards the um, street property line. And that would solve that problem, you know, 12 feet in the property. That would that would work that way. Or, um, well, or, I guess that's, that's or an have option. the deck go out, you know, uh, perpendicular yeah. in fashion like it does now. Just keep the existing deck design. Well, why don't I mean, I think the applicant. I think we we should, if if they agree, we should continue that. I mean, I, I, we, and then they can think about their options. Yeah. In the meantime, if we could get some understanding, because I, I I get their logic, and I think it's a little frustrating to put something together that seems to um, be relatively beneficial and, and not have it be approvable. So. Um, I mean, you, you're, you're, Dana, um, Mr. Quayle, Monica, you, you, you got the gist of what we have here. Um, I, I'd like to find out if that that's a no gain, you know, that's just an, um, anything that we can, we can act on differently. In the meantime, maybe you want to think about your project and see if you want to make a change in that, either pulling it back is that is a good recommendation or um some alternative um i guess just um i think that sounds like a good idea and uh, monica would probably need it to, to chime in she's kind of uh, directing the the project but just one question I, I just want to make sure that i'm on the same page if we were to look at an option to pull it back um would we be i guess how far back are we looking for something that equals the the existing deck that's currently there or um well if 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 that's if we can't i, I don't know where the dune is yeah this doesn't work right well, the entire property is technically doomed so so um, does it is it vegetated is there a good dune that comes right up to the existing house now yes the, yes it, yeah to the okay it, it kind of surrounds the the deck in that area so you, right. you you'd want it your parameters are the footprint of the house right so that would be your C word. Okay, so the front edge of the deck, Amy, what you're saying is the front the edge front, of the yes, deck yes. would be the, where the front edge of the house is now. And then yeah. so the whole house would essentially go 12 feet towards the street. Right? Yeah. Okay. And and I can... um check with the state but in in monica i unmuted you okay. we're asking do you want to continue based on more considerations or do you want to close the hearing um i can't on behalf of the client i can't close it without speaking with the client um i think pulling it towards the street it's a right of way and there's <laughs> any room there so if you pulled the whole house back dan could probably answer or or even dana if you pull the whole house back 12 feet a couple things are going to happen maybe the septic system is going to have to get redone it was already redone they were grandfathered in at 750 they were giving to put the uh, 1500 gallon tank into comply that would probably have to get done and then on the right side if you remember the deck that goes up this little um stairs which is charming with all the rosa you know beach grass and everything that's holding the right of way to the beach on the right if we pull that thing back what's going to happen to that well i th i think you're maybe over in that a little bit because they could span that um leaching area if they had to yeah I, I, and, I, and, and then and then if it did come back the retaining wall would just stay and 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 that sort of stuff could yeah, stay. I, yeah, I can't. I can't. So I, I wouldn't. I, I'm, I'm. You know. It seems when I'm there, we're, we're, we're trying to work work on some of that, and to, I, I think that's mm -hmm. moving it back to twelve, pulling it back to twelve feet. I get, I get it. it you got thirty five feet from the property line to the house. You take twelve feet away from that. Now you're down to twenty three feet, which is a car. Mm -hmm. So right. I, I, I get that's not. I get that's not the most desirable um solution and that's also a, a variance too there's a there's a minimum setback of 30 feet mm. on the street yeah. is that true and that 
location? Do we know between other houses and stuff? Is that that's um, our understand? Um, that's the way it was. It was looked at with the building inspector, but we could certainly or the the building get uh, the commissioner. But that's my understanding. We can kind of bring that up again and see if just confirm that with him. But okay, is it is it on a private way? What's the way, Dana? Uh, it's I think it's a private way. So it's, yeah, right. it's a little. Oh, usually, ambiguous. it's a, does it's it have a, a name? Do you know? Nothing I'm, I'm aware of. I don't oh, think. Okay. It's, if, it's if, not if like it has a, if, if it has an address at Julian Street, I would think that the front of that house is actually Julian Street. And so that might be a side yard, which would have less than 30 feet. It's pre existing, non conforming anyway. Did you already go to ZBA? Mm -hmm. you did, um, right? Yeah. Yep. For a section six, whatever. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yep. Um, so they were they were very happy that it's you know it, it's going to meet the side setbacks as is shown here the, where it wasn't before they were they were pleased with that um, this gets them a little more uh, you know conformity with what's what's required yeah All right. it only took me six years to learn that it was a section six so are you guys impressed with this? <laughs> All right, well give some give some thought to your options I'd like to find out if that isn't a viable consideration. Um, Can I just ask one question? It, it, would it be possible to split the difference if that didn't work? Because well, I, I think first we have to we have to come up with something from DEP that says okay. either it's a yay or a nay. I mean, what you've come up with so far is what you perceived as being a reasonable um, trade. Mm -hmm. But what Amy's saying is that that anything is a no go. Um, I'd like to see if that's not the case because because we really can't to say well you know we'll we'll move it back six instead of twelve or, or or whatever if if they just say no that doesn't happen then then that's really a waste of of, of all of our time so we need to find out um, whether there's anything we can do with that and in the meantime you guys think about. Um, and I go. I know you guys can tell this by the elevation, but the area that's decked behind the house itself to get up to the viewing stand, you take a set of stairs yeah. from the house itself. You can't even see the water. the The dune is way low at the point where the deck goes across in front of the property before the viewing stand. It really drops off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that once you elevate the house and and remove that foundation, it's going to change you know, and within a certain amount of time. So what actually, so I, actually, Dana, you can help me with that too, because sure. Amy just brought up a good point. So once this house, this is a concrete foundation, when it's removed, you're going to regrade that slope coming down from the dune? That's correct. Okay. And what happens under the house? Um, ideally, there'll be able to there'll be enough room to park a car um, once the grading is done. But obviously, over time, it's gonna it's gonna flow around there and do its thing. But hopefully, they're able to maintain at least one car parking under there. As you can see, there's very little parking in that area, so right so to be able to get a couple in front and one underneath. Okay. All right. Um, how, how much time, Amy, would we need to? Um, you think reasonably to well okay so at this point two six is is chock full so sorry um i mean so i'm gonna say i would go to the the second february or the first march um meeting um well that's what do you think dana well so so just if that might be when we can meet. How long do you think it would take for us to get some feedback? I think I can probably get feedback maybe even this week from my end, but. Um, okay. Um, I could reach out to, to Greg as well and see if you know, he has any feedback. Is that who you were reaching out to or? Greg yeah. retired, I thought. No. Really? I. No. <laughs> yeah. Sure. No, we all dream of that, but that <laughs> did not happen. I, mean, I thought I saw that he had retired, but okay. No, no you think it is somebody else. Um, okay. It would be like Feb 13 or the 6th of March, or I think maybe 
Well, I'd, 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 I'd take the twentieth of March. Why don't you oh guys my take, God! And then it's spring. Take, take take the closest one that we have. We can always continue it again. Let's go sixth of February. I mean, yeah. No. No. They said that's not that. available. Yeah. Yeah. So then. What's what's the, what's the earliest available meeting? March six. So okay. there's no meeting available in February for this. No, it's sixth. All right. Well, and then well, wait a minute. Nope, Jen, March six. Yep, she's confirming. Go to March six. All right. So let's continue so, to March sixth, and then let's maybe in the meantime we can hammer out what is conditionable so that you can have a plan that we could oh, close on. So I'll make a motion that we continue 25 Julian to March 6th. Second. Second by Penny. All in favor, Brendan? Yes. We have anybody else on yet? No. Frank, yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, and Frank, just also so you know, we have one more hearing, but Jen Foley turns into a pumpkin. So we can't be. All right, let's go then. Super, super talkative, and you have to need to read the public hearing notice I for one seven blades on uh, January twenty third, two thousand twenty three at six p.m. The Town Hall Central Conservation yeah. Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter one hundred <clears throat> Section four of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section three zero seven zero zero Town Hall Central Code of Bylaws regarding the application of St Stacia. McLeod slash Rockwood and William McLeod for work related to a septic repair, single family dwelling located at 107 Glades Road, situate, but it's another interested parties are invited to attend. Information access to virtual meeting is available uh, on the agenda post on the website. <clears throat> okay, Stop. and who do we have? I'm uh, unmuting Nick. From Grady. Good evening. Can you hear me okay? No, no. Yeah, you're breaking up a little, Nick. Go I'll ahead. Try stopping my video to see if that helps my signal a little bit. Is that any clearer? Yeah, yeah a little bit. Nice wedding picture on there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> all right. So, so uh, what we've got is a septic repair. Currently, they have a um assess pool out there and what we're proposing is a reduced field uh to fit the parameters of the uh, property because as you can see it is very it's a very tight fit um the house goes all the way up to the front and then there's glades road up front and there's no room on the side so this is really the only place that we were able to fit anything and we were lucky that uh that made sense um the septic tank is singular uh 960 600 wastewater treatment plant. So that's going to have the nitrogen reduction on it. And that allows the, the system size reduction. And we believe that's going to be a vast improvement on the cesspool that is out there currently. Uh, similar to the last one, this is Barrier Beach. So technically it's all upwind and considered coastal dune, but the entire area of work is currently crushed stone. So we won't be disturbing any kind of naturalized areas with this project. Um, we have quite a bit of relief that we're going to be going to the Board of Health for. And their hearing is set for, I believe it's February, I want to say February 19th is the hearing date for, for Board of Health. Uh, we have the limit of work, um, basically trailing around the outside of the property, staying completely within disturbed areas and some minor regrading associated with getting the required um, coverage over the piping. But it's just regrading. We're not looking to really bring anything new in onto this site. And I'll, uh, I'll take any questions that you folks might have. Um, Jen? Uh, I greatly appreciate that your limit of work is a different color. <laughs> um, makes it very easy to see, so thank you. Um, You're welcome. I'm very familiar with this piece of land and I would agree there is not a lot of flexibility for you. So um, I guess Amy might have a better idea on whether there's any potential pushback from the Board of Health on that, because otherwise, I'm not sure I have anything to contribute. Actually, I should have asked Amy if what her uh, were for us. So 
Oh, yeah, I DEP had no comments. I don't have, I mean, this site is real tiny. Um, yeah. no, no real comments. I mean, <laughs> compliant Title V system would be a great improvement. Send a block foundation. Penny? No, it looks good to me. Brendan? I have nothing to add. Um, do you think that there'll be substantial changes enough from the Board of Health that you want to keep this open? Or do you, I mean, do, if we close it, and something significant changes you don't want to re reapply do we want to just move it along a meeting or when did you say board of health was coming in i believe it's the 19th um anyway yeah i uh trying to see if i can pull that up real quickly right now um i said the 19th that that's a sunday so that can't be right it has to be the 13th Okay, Amy, what do you recommend? There's nowhere else to put it. I think you can probably close this and issue pending. Okay. And if they had some minor change, we could make an amendment to the order or something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Get a so motion. I make a motion to close pending approval by Board of Health. A second. Second from Jen. All in favor, Brendan? Yes. And Frank, yes. Well, that was painless. Thanks, Thanks Nick. <laughs> You're Thank welcome. You. Have a good night. <laughs> Thank you. You too. All right. Bye. Um, the next one's a continuance, Frank. So I want a motion to continue. I thought something said we didn't get it advertised, but we're still going to. Yeah, 160 CJC. Um, that there was a um something with you know that the our stars didn't align with the advertisement and the payment so there was so should i open do you want to open it no but oh no, no we're not going to continue it if it isn't opened right so it's just coming back on the six penny are you trying to mislead me no well i was told it was going to be continued to february 6th well, we can't. Oh, you're right. So then, do we open it and immediately continue it because it wasn't advertised? How long are we going to uh, talk about this? Oh, I think we do open it. <laughs> I want to see Jen turn into a pumpkin. <laughs> oh my! God. It's not pretty when that happens. <laughs> She's not going to turn into a pumpkin. All right, Somebody gonna, even, like gonna throws gonna up open, on me. I'm going to open this, and if I'm wrong, we'll do it again all right yeah yeah good idea. All right. on uh january 23rd 2023 during the 6 p.m meeting the central conservation commission will act on the request of james Carmody for determination of applicability of the massachusetts wetlands protection act and the situ wetlands bylaw for activities related to constructing two new decks and footings <laughs> at single family dwelling at location 160 chief justice cushing highway situated but is under just interested parties are invited to attend information access the meeting will be available posted on the agenda on the website um okay and then we're going to i make a motion to continue 160 chief justice cushing to february 6th that's from penny that second from jen and all in favor brendan yes and frank yes and if for some reason we did that wrong We'll open it again. At we'll be do it on the sixth. All right. Okay. I think that's a good approach. Okay. All right. Okay. So Let's now. go to the minutes. Do that quick. I make a motion that we accept the minutes as written from December fifth and December nineteenth. Who's chairing this thing? Well, I'm just <laughs> trying to move it quick. All right. Go ahead. A uh, second. All in favor, Brendan. Yes. Frank. Yes. Okay, what's next, Penny? Okay, certificate of compliance. Amy, are they all set? Uh, yes, this was for the um, pool mm. at 169, yes. Okay, um, I was not at the last meeting when you closed 298 Central, but the orders looked fine to me, but somebody else should probably do it. Brendan? Brendan, Jen, what do we say? Meeting. What do you want me to say? Well, somebody has to accept the order. Oh, you didn't read oh. the order. 
I make a motion we accept the orders for 298 Central. Um, and Brendan, you want to second that? I'll second that. All in favor, Penny? Yeah. And Frank, yes. Okay. What else, Amy? Um, I just know that we are really super busy. Um, and it's not slowing down. We got some big projects coming through, lots of fun stuff, but and nothing else really. I guess we should take the opportunity to have a short meeting because they're not going to be like this. Like the next meeting is going to be long. So well, it's already gone on longer than I was hoping for tonight. So I know. Uh, how, how did that happen, Frank? <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. Um, um Julian. I we know. Um <laughs> Do you wow. want to have your update on trails, Frank? So just Before real quick, we... yeah, real quick. Um, if it, I, I hope by the, the next meeting, I'm going to try to send to all of you a list of the things that I think we have going on and upcoming year and things that I'm hoping that we can maybe address and whatnot. There's a lot of lot of issues out there, um, so trying to put that together and Jen is bearing down on me to get the town report done. Um, so we'll get that wrapped up. Um, most of our signage is up at the yeah. access parking areas with the exception of a few uh, minor things. Ernie's putting together a couple of little changes for us and um, we should have that pretty well squared away. And Andy, um, Got the fence put in at Appleton. Um, That's amazing. Yeah, it looks great. That's beautiful. So oh, we wonderful. Have to, we have to figure He's out. He's out there Appleton. digging a lot of holes. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it's nice, and and it sounds like he's already got good group of people that are um, interested in in having some some additional plots out there. There's going to be a water issue if let's keep just keeps raining like it is now. Um, and then there's a lot of the old stuff left from the old farmer. There's a bunch of poles and fencing oh, and these little structures that have to get cleaned up. So we'll have to work on those. Um, and I guess that Andy said that he's gonna, the other part of that, um, CPC thing was a, um, uh, elevated, uh, area for someone with disabilities that could do some farming and so that'll come next out there which would be great elevated plot yeah and i think we're we're close to being able to go out to bid on the um accessible picnic areas and stuff uh, morse's or jeff hassett's got those revised and uh, paul and i just have to take a quick look at them and i think we're good to do that so um that part's positive, but to Amy's point is just, it's not stopping. It um, never will. So, um, but the rest of it's good and, and hopefully we'll have a chance to get together and discuss some of these other pieces that are going on. Yeah, what, what do we think about the QR codes? Um, I don't have a strong feeling about it one way or the other. I wouldn't use it, but if, if Jen, what do you think? Are people, is that something? Yeah. They see? I, I think it's a great idea. I mean, what's a QR I, code? It's, a, it looks like a, like a pixelated, um, like a bunch of dots. Uh, but you, if you hold your phone up to your camera up to it, it reads it as like, and it tells you what website to go to. So if you click on it, it means you don't have to put in, um, you know, type a website address or something. Um, um, so it's it's definitely a a valuable idea, um, but uh, you know, I don't have a lot of experience with them. I can do research, but like it's something that needs to be done right, as opposed to just like slapped up on something. Right. Um. Oh, yeah. I mean, we we or Jen actually was looking into it like there's ways you can do it free off, you know, like just make them if you just go to Google, that type of thing. But apparently I.T. Um, 
says you, you can't really use those. Those are hackable or something like that. So there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. So mm -hmm. there's so the people the people that it. are it's being proposed um, by the some of the trails folks. Do they uh, do they have an answer for that? No, I think that they probably think that maybe the town's IT people might do it for us or something like that. <laughs> Okay. Um, I'm not going. I never, I was always wondering what you call that pixelated. Now I can, <laughs> when I explain it to someone, so it's a little square with a bunch of dots on it, but it's, it's pixelated. It's my professional uh, I like, summary. I like that. I, thank you. Um, well, is that something we need to get some money for, or, or uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm not quite sure. I guess no, maybe we'll... it's something that a volunteer could take on. It's just a matter of who, and you know what I mean. Like in Hanover, I had an open space committee volunteer do it. So I mean, I think it's, I think it's more of a, I don't know. Oh. Okay. It's, I think it's it's a little it's a little bit complicated in that you got to know where this you like where you're sending people to is a reliable source. Yeah. Right. So I don't know. It's probably not. It's it's probably more of a work group thing than it is a conservation meeting thing to discuss. But I guess it's if if you think it's valuable and, and it should be done, then um, then I don't know. Well, why don't we say why don't we say this? If if everyone on this evening feels that it has value, why don't we say that we we in, we're certainly happy to to work with someone to do this, but uh, it doesn't sound like it's going to be IT. So if they have the technical ability or whatever, and they want to keep let us know what that is. Um, if it's not, and we need to find someone else maybe they've got an idea on that i mean right and, and if it's if it's more complicated than that then maybe it is a, a small change um like i don't know i hate to say the word cpc but it's a, some kind of a project that somebody could raise money towards i mean you know falling into the category of trail maintenance and upkeep type items you know what i mean yep. no i i guess that would be a good thing to know is what the cost would be to put that together so maybe they I think I think if I remember the email or, or letter basically it was asking could the IT department put that together and if that's if the answer to that is no I think we should just respond to that that the commission um, is certainly in favor of it but do they have a alternative to doing that Let's see where it goes right. I should probably know this but um so we're we're just trying to get a QR code to send someone to a website for a map. Yeah, like probably put it on like. Yeah, I don't think that that's that hard. It's not. It just like sending it to the right place, like managing it. Like, do you have one QR code for all of the maps, or are they specific at each kiosk? Like, there's just a little bit more. Okay. Like, well, I guess that's a decision to be made. Yeah. But as far as generating a QR code, it shouldn't be hard. I that's what you say. <laughs> so, so far out of my wheelhouse, Brendan. Me too. <laughs> well, let me know when you want one generated. I I could figure. I it like out. paper maps. <laughs> um, if you uh, if you have some thoughts on that, that it's relatively easy to put together, I'm happy to. We could relay that information. Just be careful what you sign on yeah <laughs> uh, uh, uh. that's the truth um and i guess there's some interest in moving forward some more on border street so i'm going to try to um, speak with karen canfield about border street um and see where we're going um unfortunately they there's not a link between border street and Hubble this time, which is disappointing. Um, so we'll have to figure out what what we do with that. But um, that's a discussion we'll we'll have, and maybe we can come back to the commission with some thoughts and ideas on where we're going. 
Um, I can't think of anything else for this evening. Well, that must mean it's over. I think so. I think I could take a motion to close. I make, make a motion. motion. Go ahead, Jen. I make a motion we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Brendan? Yes. And Frank, yes. Look at that. Good night. They're pending agenda running the meeting. It just moves right along. Hey, listen. You need us. You need Thank us. Thank you, then.